What a fantastic time of the year. We've got some blue sky finally. The rains have subsided and hopefully with all this sunshine it's going to heat up the bay. At the moment we're just into October and the water temperature is around that 12 degrees. It is snapper season but the water temperature is still a bit cold. There's some people catching some fish. That's great when they get the chance to head out. For me, I'm just going to wait a little bit longer just until that water temp gets up a bit more. I usually like it sort of towards the end of October when it's up around that 15 to 16 degrees and then the fish are very hungry and biting their heads off before they start spawning in December. So it's uh, still a magnificent time of the year without a doubt. But while I'm waiting to get out, I just wanted to run through some of the gear and tackle associated with snapper fishing here in Victoria. Uh, both Port Phillip, both Western Port, the different rigs, hooks, leaders, setups, all of that stuff to hopefully help you on your journey to catch snapper in Victoria this snapper season. So let's get into it and firstly I just want to start with rods and reels mainly because in Western Port and Southern Port Phillip Bay the same rods and reels do apply whereas when you're fishing upwards uh, say from uh, Mount Eliza uh, to the north of the bay is a completely different setup and the reason being is because the tide isn't running as hard uh, and the southern part of Port Phillip is pretty much similar to uh, to what Western Port is with this high tidal flow and the rods and reels need to be a little bit stronger. So just starting off with the basic setup for Port Phillip uh, generally it's a four to six kilo rod some people might go, go up to around a ten kilo rod um, either fiberglass or graphite. I've got a composite rod here. Um, this is unreal. Full butt section so it sits in the rod holder. Split butts can be a little bit more difficult because they don't actually sit in a rod holder neatly whereas a full butt configuration will do that. Um, in this case I've got a bait runner style reel. So this is a Shimano Thunnus 4000. Again, common reels is either a little bit bigger than that, a 6,000 or an 8,000 if you do want to go that big. But if you're fishing in that uh, what northern part of Port Phillip Bay where the tide is not as strong, you don't need to fish that heavy. That's why I've got a 4,000 size reel. But once again, with that bait runner feature, I'll go into that part a little bit later on. I'm just running six pound monofilament for the northern part of Port Phillip Bay. The reason I like monofilament is because braid tends to float. And obviously if you're using braid and it tends to float on the surface of the water, sometimes you can actually miss the bite. Sure enough, wind up your bait, it's been crushed by a snapper and you haven't even seen it. Whereas with the mono, generally is it um, sinks down with the water and the weight of the, the sinker and it'll stay tight all the way to your bait. So you do feel any inquiry on that. Now, just with that bait runner feature, it's a very common reel to be used in Port Phillip Bay, especially if the fish are finicky. Generally, you can set that rear drag and that then allows the fish to freely take line depending on your rear drag setting here. I'll just back that one off for this purpose. And the fish can take line relatively easy. Then all you need to do is just turn the handle. That clicks the front drag into gear and sets the hook automatically just as you're just winding the, that, uh, that slack up to come tight with the fish. So these are a really, really good quality, beneficial reel to be using for Port Phillip Bay other than a standard spin reel. So with the rods, again, this one is a live fiber. It's a beautiful, beautiful rod. I've been using it for quite a number of years. It's seven foot, one piece. This one's six to eight kilos. Um, it has quite, well, I would say, quite a sensitive tip for a six to eight kilo rod. And once again, that just allows that fish to, to grab the bait and you'll feel this load up straight away, meaning you can just grab a hold of the rod and go and set the hook. With that, I've then got into the setup, I've then got a bead, a soft bead, which sits on my line. Now the purpose of this, there's a few names for it. I like calling it an idiot bead. Sometimes when you're out fishing with idiots and they don't actually uh, know how to fish correctly. And when you are just starting out, of course, that is how we all began once upon a time. Um, but you do learn from knowledge 
and uh, and basically what this does is this saves this guide tip. Now anybody can do it, I've done it before, smashed a guide, so in that case I like to protect it with a soft glow green bead. The reason, when you're winding up and you're getting all excited, you can actually force the swivel and almost the sinker all the way through the guide and of course snap the ceramic of that guide. So in preventing that, throw on a glow bead because it will prevent any damages to your rod. Then, I have a rolling a ball sinker. Now that is just a size one ball sinker. Sometimes you might need to go to a size two and that just runs directly to my crane swivel. The crane swivel to avoid any line twist while the bait's sitting out there. Now, why do I have the sinker above my swivel? Well, some rigs, like I've got here on this one, which is exactly the same outfit, the only difference is I've actually got a sinker running directly to, to the top of the bait. Now, the difference between the two. On days when it's really, really calm, you want your bait to sink down as natural as a dead fish is just slowly sinking to the bottom. That is the sole reason why I've got the sinker above my swivel, so that the weight is here as this is, is it, the, the sink is actually sinking, the bait's already out further because you've cast it, and the bait is just slowly getting pulled down to the sea floor. That is one. This other one that I like to use on days when it's a bit more rough to get the bait down quickly because sometimes with the wave action the swell action on the water the bait if it's rigged like that the sinker will pull down but the bait's going to take a really long time to get down and the waves can and with all the lines spread out on the surface of the water can make it take quite a, a while to get down in your burley trail so by adding the sinker all the way directly to the bait, that's just adding more weight to the bait, getting it down in that burley trail a little bit quicker. Now, you don't have to use a ball, you can use a bean or you can use a barrel. It's entirely up to you. Um, either sinker is going to do the job, but just don't go too heavy with the sinker. Like I said, a size one or a size two is more than enough. Okay, so the next, following on from the sinker and the swivel, I just want to touch on the rest of the rig. So here I've got about, um, roughly about a metre length of 40 pound leader. Um, I've used lighter leader in the past, 20 pound, even 30 pound, and found that sometimes you get the odd snapper that's got sharp teeth, it'll bite you off. That can happen a few times. So I've opted to go up to 40 pound, which I haven't had a problem with, and, uh, and find that more than suitable. Um, then I just have my hook set up. So in this case, I've got a set of 6-0 mustard octopus suicides on there. They just snelled together at about what I think is a, is a good pilchard size. I like to use pilchards for bait um, because Snapper seems to love them. Basically with that, once the fish is hooked through using the 6-0s, I've got a lot of hook exposure so that when the fish grabs the bait, he's going to get hooked. Not to say it happens every single time, but most of the time, sometimes you get the fish that crushes the bait and actually misses the hook, but that's, it is what it is. Uh, but like I said, most of the time, with that much hook exposure out of a pilchard, you're uh, bound to catch more fish than you uh, than you need for the season. Obviously, you can go a 4 or you can go with 5 O's, each to their own, but I find these hooks are absolutely dynamite for that purpose, without a doubt in fishing in Port Phillip in that northern end. All right, let's get into Western Port and Southern Port Phillip Bay, rods and reels and tackle. So that all differs quite vastly because of the current flow that Western Port and Southern Port Phillip Bay does have, uh, in which case you're probably going to be stepping up your reels uh, to a spin reel or even to an overhead reel, which I've got just here. Um, and something that's obviously going to have enough, hold enough line and preferably braid. The reason that you want braid is because it is a thinner diameter. Um, it's going to be uh, a lot harder with mono to feel or even see bites on your rod tip in Western Port, mainly because of the amount of line you're going to have out because the current will take it before your sinker actually hits the bottom. Whereas at least with braid being thinner, you'll have a lot of line out, but it'll keep it'll pull tight and when you do see that bite on the end of your line depending on your hook setup you can strike and get those hooks stuck to a fish straight away um, plus there's also a lot of different varieties of sharks and stingrays 
And if you're snapper fishing and you happen to hook a 100 kilo, seven giller, uh, or one of those big skates that are swimming around cleaning the bottom of the ocean, you'll be tight to that fish or shark uh, for quite some time. Then you're reducing your time in having fresh baits down to catch a snapper. So personally speaking, um, get some braid, 50 pound is about the norm and really stick it to some of those fish without a doubt. So your twin power 6,000, twin power 8,000, Saragossa 6, 8, 10, 18,000 in my case, something big and strong is definitely gonna do the job. Now, when it comes to rods, actually, when it comes to reel still, overhead or spin, who chooses what is entirely up to them. Me personally, I like an overhead. It gathers line up a lot quicker, it's a lot faster, and it's a lot easier to use, without a doubt. So, overheads are all the way for me. I know for a while there, it, it uh, I used to, used to fish overheads, then I went back to spin, now I've gone back to overheads again. I personally just find them a lot better in fishing high current locations. So, then we get into the rods, and like I mentioned before, between Port Phillip, Southern Port Phillip, and Western Port, they do differ. Southern Port Phillip and Western Port, you want something that's going to be able to support the weight of the sinker, as well as fighting fish, big lines, heavy, strong lines, and fast current. So eight to 15 kilo rods in a six foot, six foot, six or seven foot are definitely gonna be more than enough uh, and strong enough. And again, I've got a six foot six, six to 20 kilo uh, live fiber. This is great, packs a punch and can handle anything that Western Port throws at it. And the same thing, this one here, for instance, this is just the overhead version, exactly the same, ready to go and smack some fish down in that, uh, that fast water area. So what I wanna get into now is just how the, the rigs do differ between Western Port and Port Phillip. And with, in connecting your braid to your leader, I just do a, uh, I just do an Albright knot, you can do an FG, you can do a uni knot, you can do a whatever. Where possible, try and prevent using a swivel to join the two together, because um, you're going, with the e your easy rig for your sinker to go on, uh, you're going to need to run quite a length of leader, and if you have a swivel, it's only gonna go to your rod tip, and you're gonna have potentially three or four meters of line sticking out, um, which is not going to be beneficial when you're winding up a fish. So just a nice fine knot as such, just to join them together. Sorry about the big bit of tag there, but that is what it is with mine, because I cut it that long. Um, but that is the nice little tight uh, Albright. Then on that length of leader, so this length, I've only shortened this for this purpose, but this length of leader is um, generally about three meters for me, and it is 80 pound. So I like 80 pound, does wonders for big sharks and all that sort of stuff and doesn't get compromised on the bottom or anything like that so I don't lose my rig. Then on that 80 pound I have a easy rig sinker clip. So there's my easy rig sinker clip. That usually comes with a little metal clip hanging off it. I actually remove that and I replace that with a piece of 10, 12, 15 pound monofilament fishing line and a loop for my sinker. Now this is the difference between fishing Port Phillip and, and Western Port with sinkers. Port Phillip, you're using a size one or two bean barrel or ball sinker. In Western Port, you're using a bomb or a snapper lead that's anything from six ounces, depending on the current, all the way up to 20. I've used 40 ounces before in the past, fishing right through the middle of a tide. It's not comfortable, but you still catch fish. The reason for removing the clip is for two reasons. One is to keep my bait off the bottom, so it is a little bit higher, because if my sinker snags, I potentially have to break off my entire rig. Whereas because I've rigged the sinker on 40, 50 centimetres of mono, if that gets snagged, I can then quite easily bust it off and still fight my fish um, without a sinker on there, should I have to, and I just forego the cost of a sinker. No big deal to me. That then runs to another, to a crane swivel. That crane swivel obviously is um, to prevent line twist. You get those normal brass swivels or the black ones. They just don't rotate, spin it quickly enough in the current. So surely enough you can wind up and you can have all twisted line and it's a real nightmare because you have to then re-rig. But the cranes definitely do it. 
Then I've got around about a metre of 80 pound again, which is my bite leader. And that runs to, depending on your hook setup, you can either run a hook setup the same as in Port Phillip, where you've got your snelled hooks together. Or alternatively, if you're like me, you just fish a single circle hook. This double hook setup is Snell's hook setup is really really good for pieces of squid or fish uh, fillets or something along those lines. The only problem I find with it is because of the current your baits can spin quite easily and are off-putting to many fish species. Um, so I prefer not to use this setup plus also it is difficult depending on the amount of line you have out with your bait in the current as to if you strike to set the hook, half the time you're only pulling up the slack line. You're not actually embedding the hooks in the fish. So this sometimes could be detrimental to your fishing. Hence why I like that single circle hook. So these mustard demon single circles in like a size 8 is what I prefer. And the good part about these circle hooks for those that don't know is the hook just fishes, uh, the hook sets themselves. You don't have to do anything um, they're almost like they've got a little automatic motor in them. So the whole purpose of this is you can have as much line out as you want in the current and the fish comes along and swallows your bait because your bait you're going to be using on this is actually a lot smaller than what you would normally use on a snelled hook setup. So in this case you could just put a calamari ring just hanging off the hook. You could use a small piece of, um, of tuna fillet or a salmon fillet or even a bit of calamari uh, instead of the ring just open it up and just have it as a, a, a slither so to speak and you're just pinning the end right through the center and just leaving it there that way it's not much bait out there and 99 percent of the time it's not going to spin in the current unless you've rigged it off center um, in which case you just test at the side of the boat and then you can actually re uh, reset that hook but that in the current is just going to sit there any fish that comes along and swims up your burly trail and sniffs it is just going to engulf it and when it engulfs it it just puts the whole thing in its mouth it feels nothing and the fish just goes it might feel a little bit of tension so as it's grabbed it it goes uh, and it goes to swim off and as it does the purpose of that hook rot rotates around rotates around and actually pins in the corner of the jaw every single time without the angler doing a thing. As soon as the angler grabs that rod and strikes, they will pull this out of the mouth every time because there is no, it's perfectly in line. There is nothing there for it to catch on. So it can just fall straight out. It won't fall out if you leave it and just let the rod tip start bouncing. Once you notice that bounce on the rod tip, your fish is hooked. All you have to do is wind up the line till it comes tight, just keep winding. There's no striking action, nothing. And that way you know that that hook is embedded in the side of the fish here. Great for gummy shark fishing, great for whiting fishing. Absolutely fantastic for snapper fishing. But like I said before, it will not work if you're fishing with monofilament and if you strike because it's not designed for those styles of fishing. Anyway, it's a great hook. It works absolutely perfect in snapper fishing and uh, the circle hook is the way to go. So I think that pretty much rounds out everything when it comes to rods, reels, braid, leader, hooks, sinkers and everything for Port Phillip and Western Port. A couple of weeks to go before I head out there. No doubt there's a lot of you guys already out there fishing. Hope you catch some marvellous fish this season. Be safe and have an absolute ball. I hope you get something out of this video. If you do, that's great. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel that would be fantastic because no doubt there'll be more content popping up uh, week to week when I, when I can actually get out and do it. Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope there's some information there that helps, like I said just before. Thank you for watching. Happy snapper season. Catch plenty. See you again.